Okay, so it's Saturday. It's the 14th of March. And uh, this feels like it's becoming a bit about therapy for me. So thank you for listening. And if you're not listening, it doesn't matter because I'm sort of doing this for myself. For those of you who uh, reached out and asked previously, yes, this is coffee. I like coffee. For those of you who will ask, that is a joint. Um, that's legal. I mean, not federally, so, but Oregon. Um, today's been a pretty, pretty uh, rough day. Um, when, when I'm a situation, as I found, I'm 41 years old, and as I found out over the years, um, when there are things outside of my control that I can't do anything about, that I cannot change, um, I shut down. I withdraw, I become very quiet. And um, that's what I did today. So I woke up this morning, I saw the construction guys, the framers were working. It was like, it's Saturday, but that's awesome. It's snowing out, that's awesome. My puppy is cuddled up next to me. That's awesome. She's downstairs right now. Good things. And I went out and I saw the crew and saw what they were doing and, and how my house is going to be freaking awesome. Um, and then I got back in, uh, in the trailer and, um, and I, I started making my, my daily calls to see how my friends are doing and the, and people are doing. And uh, I found out that uh, a friend of mine and someone who's uh... hi puppy. Uh, so Lynn Bryan passed away today. Um. So this is real, like, um, in our dance world, like people are dying. Um, and I was, I was going to wait for this, but why, why do we not know about this sooner? No, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for that. Ah, <sighs> fun times. Let me check my notes. Oh yeah, I knew before the screen even turned on. So I think it was about a month ago. I uh, I put on Facebook because there, there was something going on, and I I, I said because I got this from a podcast that Shahid sent me, and I'll I'll tell you guys guys about the the podcast below. It's free. It's on podcast. Everyone should watch it, listen to it, listen to it. It's amazing. Um, oh puppy, where was I? buckets. So, um, in life, it's really easy when you, uh, whew, something affects you and you go, is this, does this threaten my life or does it not? And if it doesn't treat it like that, because at the time that was, that was the thing that was happening was it's not life threatening. Um, but this shit is. So if you're not well already, um, you can be honest with yourself. This should be fucking scary. I don't know why we didn't know about this earlier. I do know why we didn't. But again, I'm saving that for later. Um, if if uh, you're if you're over my age, I'm, I dance sophisticated. I'm 41. If you dance masters, you should be really careful right now because we think we're strong people, but this is, these are our bodies, you know, uh, so many people are run down because they burn the candle at every fricking possible end to do what they need to do. Um, so take care of yourselves. Um, my parents, mom, dad, if you guys are watching this, don't go out to ceramics class. Give it a week. 
what I feel we need to do is wait until everyone can get tested at one of those drive through things and hopefully it comes out. And once you know if you have it or not, then you'll know you don't have it or you have it and you can be treated accordingly, just like those buckets. And for those of you who um, don't know, if we don't know, like, I feel great. Um, and I hung out with Robin the other day. We played ping pong. We're like 10 feet away. But like, what if I have something and I don't know? And I'm not coughing, I'm not sneezing, but I'm talking and things are in the air. And if, if my friend got this, that'd be horrible. So that's why we don't go to ceramics class. That's why we only go out if we need to. This is so weird to talk about. Oh. If you're still watching. Anyway, Lynn was a great dude. I met him through my, my late wife, Nikki. Um, he was one of her first dance mentors. Um, yeah, he was always on the floor, dancing, smiling, or DJing, or just building the community. So Lynn, we'll miss you. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Why didn't we know sooner? Yeah. Um, don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. Um, I was on the phone today with a family friend uh, who's a Trump supporter. And I don't usually do political stuff, but this is my day. So this is what happened. And um, and they mentioned, well, at least at least our, our president um, is right on top of this and is doing the right thing and and um and i said are you serious like usually i have a conversation but i just put out the question like really like you actually think that and they said yes and and we agreed to talk tomorrow um that was the end of the conversation um i'm i'm a pretty smart dude um like educationally um, I've learned a lot streetwise. I've learned, hey, I can cry on camera. Um, and I'm, I'm looking back going, why, why did I go to Mad Jam? Like, why would I go to a dance weekend? Because um, I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand. Um, because I was thinking about me. I'm fine. I travel all the time. I'm in airplanes 40 weekends a year, you know. Um, but I wasn't thinking about everyone else. And that was selfish of me. Um, so that's why we didn't know sooner. So if you're beating yourself up like me and you're wondering why, um, why didn't we know we're educated people? How could we, you know, did people not reach out from other countries where this was happening before us? And, um, and they did, but our government didn't pay attention to that. And they failed. And and this is different than like your leaders being an embarrassment, you know, to the world, or you feel threatened daily because if it wasn't for Stephen Colbert or Seth Meyers, you know, to like put a fun spin on the news, <laughs> we do this. Hmm. Whew. Okay, how can we be safe and how can we protect our friends and family, neighbors, and all humans of the world? Well, um, listening to every news source for the last couple of days, as you may have been also, uh, but if not, um, don't interact with other humans. Um, wash your hands a ton. Go graze anatomy, you know, um, and then don't touch your face because that's how the virus gets into you. So. Uh, could it be on my body? Yeah. So you shower and you scrub and you use soap uh, and enjoy that process. I think I mentioned this a couple of days ago. When you're scrubbing your hands, don't think of it as a chore. Think of it as like, a, oh, yeah, I'm scrubbing these hands. Like, you know, maybe do some like rhythm changes and like um, put on a song and play with the music, you know, like have fun with it. Speaking of have fun with it, today is uh, 
dialogue is a Stephen White wearing day. Stephen White fan club. You can find him online. Stephen, hi. I'm sorry I'm crying during your uh, your t-shirt day. And the Laura Hunter was, are, are nice too. I'd like one of those. Um, speaking of rhythms, so um, move the coffee over there. Today, um, I didn't feel like I could put a, a trophy up and talk about it. So I wanted to bring a little more fun to today. So uh, with rhythms, first of all, this, I know you're waiting for this, but this red tree frog is from Panama. I was uh, there a few months ago with Christina Wife Chambers. And um, this was a replacement for a frog that I had lost in my house fire that Dax, who I mentioned yesterday, Dax and I used to go to Thailand every year together and, and uh, play music and, and just like forget about the real world and like, you know, just, just chill. Anyway, we were in Chiang Mai and um, on this river float trip, we got to this little village and they were trying to sell us these frogs. And so you hear this. And of course we took it and start like, like hitting different rhythms and like, uh, it was really fun. And we started dancing and we, and we bought one from, uh, we just got one from there. Or at least I think Dax got one. I got one because it was in the fire. Anyway, this is from Panama. It's red. It's pretty. Now, these are baby alpacas. Um, I just spent a month in Peru. And um, one of the things I love about traveling and then I love about solo traveling is that I, um, I sort of feel like I'm scuba diving. Here's what I mean by that. Uh, in my normal world, I am the protagonist. And as I move about, um, I'm not blending in. I'm me. And I'm, and I'm usually in a, in a situation, let's say I'm at a dance convention where I'm aware that people might know who I am and, and I'll be watched. So if you're in front of a camera, you know, people watch you. Um, so when I'm traveling solo in a place that I don't know anybody here, bless you puppy. Um, I feel like I'm scuba diving. I feel like I'm in a world so foreign and I can't talk. I've got a regulator in my mouth. You know, and you're, you're just, I'm looking around, I'm controlling my breathing. If you're not a scuba diver, um, it, it, for buoyancy control and just for, uh, not wanting to run out of air before everyone else on your dive trip, cause you feel like you're going to ruin it for them. You pace your breathing and, um, you learn to enjoy that. Otherwise you panic underwater. So. Anyway, going through Peru, not knowing anyone, I feel like when I'm traveling on my own and looking around, I feel like I'm scuba diving um, because I can just look at all the pretty fish and the coral and the and, and see shit and appreciate it and not feel like uh, I'm being watched because the fish don't care about the scuba divers. There's Lizzie. Come here. Come here. Want to say hi? All right, so uh, these little baby alpacas, um, they are so super soft. I know you're not here right now, but um, they're, they're as soft as my puppy Lizzie. Um, this one's from the outdoor market and it's shaggy. And this one's from the baby alpaca farm. Um, and uh, they're really cute. Lizzie, come here. Come here, darling. If you haven't met my dog, um, this is Lizzie. Say hi. Mic test. She licks her paws and then she coughs. That's what we do. <sighs> Everyone needs puppy love, right? Good girl. She's 11 and a half, almost years young. She still acts like a puppy. You already had your dinner, I know. All right, let's see if the camera's still recording. fun running the system all by myself and it's one of those like I, I double check and like yeah I think I got all the lights on and the set right so yeah it feels good to have a project to work on it's freaking day two of not going out it's day two um okay moderation um something uh 
something really important is, yeah, could we be locked in our apartments and houses and wherever we are for a month, two months, three months and um, and be stuck there? Yeah, it could happen. But for me, regular event preparedness um, involves two weeks of food and water. So if you don't already have two weeks of food and water, which I'm assuming most Americans don't, um, the same way most Americans don't understand investments and that that kind of stuff, um, get go out and get two weeks worth of stuff. Make a list before you go. Figure out what you would need to survive, not live well, but survive for two weeks for food and water. Um, I don't see water going anywhere though, right? Like infrastructure is not changing for water. And like in Oregon, uh, if you don't pay your water bill this month, they can't shut off the water. You're responsible for the, f the fee of it. But um, I don't know about the other states, but in Oregon and, and uh, at the time that I'm recording this, uh, your water won't be shut off if you can't pay the bill. So if you have to focus on which bill to pay, um, don't pay your water bill. Plus DWP, uh, that's another story. Um, so where are we at? Oh yeah. Moderation. So only get what you need because food will keep coming into the supermarket. And when it doesn't, the government will have to take care of you because if you're stuck in your house, there'll be a delivery or, uh, some sort of system where you can go get food. Yeah. Um, and, uh, when you're, when you're planning your moderation, just remember what food goes bad. Uh, lettuce lasts how many days fruit lasts how many days Buy avocados that are like harder you know um, don't get stuff that's ready now and then make sure that you have all your frozen stuff um, yeah ready to go protein sources uh, good fats sources etc you don't need toilet paper first world problems okay so uh, last thing um, so I had a uh, an amazing, unbelievable, life-changing, um, it's not experience, it's the whole thing, just Burning Man. I went to Burning Man last year and it was the largest emotional and spiritual awakening. Um, bless you, puppy. Um, anyway, there is a quote that was told to me there at Burning Man. Uh, and this has come back to me, uh, in a, in a couple different places in my life in different parts of the world. It's, it's fascinating how that ties in. But again, that's another story that'll be uh, on my blog about my Columbia trip. But uh, this the phrase is, uh, we are not humans having a spiritual experience. We are spirits having a human experience. And that made me so happy. Um, we are not humans having a spiritual experience we are spirits having a human experience which is is what i personally believe where our energy because i don't know about you you can for me i can feel people's energies if they're very strong or very bad or very yeah so if you can feel energies um, you might feel this to be true, that we're just a spirit. And then when we, when our body passes, um, that energy, uh, that spirit leaves your body and it, it continues its journey. So us as a human is just part of what's, of, of your inner self. You can call it your soul. You can call it your, you know, whatever you'd like to call it. So, um, yeah, what are you guys doing this weekend? <laughs> I'm going to edit some videos, play with my puppy, play the robot in some ping pong and sit in my massage chair, um, stretch. I have lists. Yeah. So keep busy. Wash your hands. Be kind. <laughs>